Frederick Washington is a field minister at Piedmont Correctional in Salisbury, North Carolina. He earned his bachelor's degree from Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary and now spreads the gospel in the facility where he is. Fred's knowledge of the scripture is apparent in his sermons which are Bible-based. Prison Pod Productions would like to thank him for his time that is put into each of his sermons. Here is Fred's latest piece. My name is Frederick Washington and I'm a field minister at Piedmont Correctional in Salisbury, North Carolina. Today I'm going to conduct an expositional sermon on the four Gospels. The scripture text for today is John, first chapter, first through the second verse, which reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was with God in the beginning. The title of this sermon is Why the Gospel of John is Not a Synoptic Gospel. In doing this, I'm going to conduct a very short exposition of the four Gospels and show how they are similar and then point out a major difference that separates the Gospel of John from that of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Let's begin by looking at the common narratives of the four Gospels, which is emphasized as they tell the identical story of a Jewish prophet sent by God who preaches to crowds of people, performs miracles, attracts disciples, antagonizes the Pharisees, confronts the Jewish leaders, is crucified by the Romans, and resurrected by God in which they all identify him as Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, and the Son of Man. And finally, all the Gospels regard Jesus as the fulfillment of Jewish scriptures. However, when we review and study the four Gospels expositionally, we will clearly see that each Gospel was written to a specific audience with a unique way of telling the story about Jesus Christ based on the culture, the belief system of each of the audiences. So what is a synoptic gospel? A synoptic gospel is one that has commonality. It is the good news of seeing things the same way or together, having a similar approach or marching in the same footsteps. Three of the Gospels do just that, as they talk about the man Jesus and his ministry on earth after the creation, the fall of man, and God's plans for redemption, as demonstrated in the New Testament. The word Gospel itself is an Anglo-Saxon word that means God's spell, signifying good story or good news. We will to start with our exposition of study with the Gospel of Matthews. The Gospel of Matthews was written for a Jewish audience, and he began his book in Bethlehem with the birth of Jesus. Then he went on to prove Jesus' dignity by uh, highlighting the genealogy of Jesus taking us back to David in an attempt to prove that Jesus is the Messiah, as it was predicted that the Messiah would be a descendant of David. Yet Matthews impressively take Jesus' genealogy all the way back to Abraham, the father of the Jewish race, to whose seed the promise was spoken, therefore preaching his gospel on Jesus as the Son of Man, long after the creation of the world. Whereas Mark was written for a Roman audience, and he focused on the works of Jesus on earth as a man of action, resulting in his gospel starting with the ministry of John the Baptist, and then going on into Jesus' ministry, starting at the Jordan River. Matthew's gospel and Mark's gospel also preached about Jesus, the man, long after the creation, as he walked the face of the earth. Hence, Luke's gospel, like Matthew's, begins
began in Bethlehem, the birthplace of Christ, but was written to a Gentile audience with Theopolis in mind. The book focused on Luke establishing his method of research and documentation since he was not a disciple of Jesus. And as he uncovered Jesus as a friend of outcasts, and we see that in Luke 5th chapter 29 verse. And by pointing to Jesus' genealogy near the end of his gospel instead of at the beginning, like Matthew said. Unlike Matthew's, Luke genealogy dates back beyond David and, and Abraham all the way to Adam. Therefore, making his gospel a part of the story of the Son of Man after creation. Like the other two, of synop- the other three, no, excuse me, the other two synoptic gospels uh, before him. Finally, let's look at the Gospel of John. His Gospel were written to a Greek audience in what is believed to be emphasis in a godlistic environment, which is a dual belief system that focuses on matter and materialism versus that of the spiritual realm. In a nutshell, this belief system believes that God created Jesus as one of the many spirits to defend the good of the spiritual realm against the evil of the matter and material realm of creation that is inhabited by created people, Satan and his forces. In short, because the Greeks believed that Jesus was created by God and not God himself, John focused his gospel on the eternity of Christ thus drawing a battle line between the Christian belief and that of God belief as he introduced Jesus as being fully God. Moreover, John Gospel entered into the Gnostic world of belief uh, like a spiritual volcanic eruption that blew the top off the God and spiritual mindset right out of the spiritual mountain of their belief with a seminary statement that points to the timelessness of Christ who became Jesus of Nazareth. John did this by taking us back before creation things. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and the same was in the beginning with God. Unlike Matthews, Mark, and Luke, John did not focus the power of his gospel on Jesus' ministry on earth. He focuses on the fact that Jesus was God, the internal Christ, who lived among men in the flesh with a blood body, and died and rose again. What John was telling his audience back then and now today is that Jesus is eternal. He is the Son of God and our Lord and Savior. Moreover, John is telling us that Jesus always was in timeless existence. He is always, he he always will be because he is the word. He always was the word and the word will always with God. These three declarations by John about Jesus refutes the Godless belief system that Jesus was created by declaring he existed before creation as a person that is equal with God. Furthermore, it's this fact that the Gospel of John was focused on, a fact that shook up the God that belief about a created Jesus who did not exist eternally according to their belief system. John focused on Jesus as God, the creator, of heaven and earth set the tone for the salvation of the people of emphasis. It's this focus on Jesus, the creator, that created an equal, an eternal approach to Jesus' work as God before the existence of man. 
the fallen man, the promised seed of redemption. And there is Jesus' works and existence that the other three Gospels did not focus on, resulting in the Gospel of John not being one of the synoptic Gospels. It is my belief that John's Gospel backed up and reinforced the three synoptic Gospels as they all agreed on created things about Jesus, with the exception of John preaching on the eternal Christ before creation. In order for God to use him to offer salvation to a people of Gnostic belief who did not know the divine nature of Christ and therefore believed him to be a created being. How does this relate to our generation of people today? For Christians, today the Bible makes it very clear that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is our Lord and Savior and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, then we are saved. But like the Greeks of God, of, of God Gnostic belief in John's day, there are so many people on earth today that do not believe in Jesus Christ as God. The need, that need to know that he is the great I am and everything else that the Bible revealed about Jesus, the eternal God, the word that became God in the flesh the promised seed, the Lamb of God, the bread of life, the light of the world, the fullness of God that came to earth as the man God to provide redemption to humanity. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, please touch the hearts of all who have heard this message to understand that you inspired all four of the Gospels of good news and that they all point to you in your eternity, works and miracles on earth and before created things, whether they are synoptic gospels or not, because your word is a blessing and salvation to all who receive it. And we thank you for that. We thank you for reaching mankind with your holy word, regardless of our current cultures, beliefs, and sinfulness. It's because of you that we go to the altar of God to worship and praise Him in your mighty name. Amen. You have been listening to The Prison Pod, a podcast not just for those in prison but for anyone who has been affected by incarceration. Ms. Valerie would love for you to write to her with your questions, comments, and show ideas. The address is Prison Pod, Post Office Box 294, Orno, Maine, 04473.